We do give everyone a warm welcome to our service this morning. Just before we open our Bibles, we're just going to have a word of prayer, shall we pray? Father, we do just thank thee for a new day. We do thank thee for an opportunity to open thy word and to just speak once again concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Our prayer would be even this day, our Father, that if there are any that do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour, that today they would come to know him for themselves. So, Father, we do just pray for help and wisdom to be given as we just seek to open the Scriptures now and ever give thee thanks in his precious and worthy name. Amen. Now, just a short passage this morning. If we could read in Luke chapter 12, please. Luke in chapter 12. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12. And reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 16. And this is what it says. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he fought within himself, saying, what shall I do, because I have no room where to, where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So it is that he that layeth put treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought of your life of what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. We know the Lord will bless the reading of his precious word. Now we've just got this scene this morning. This scene of this man who was rich. Now just at the, the start, I just want to say, we are not talking and we're not saying that it's wrong to be rich. That is not what we are saying at all. I just want to make that very clear just from the beginning. We are not talking about that but what we want to look at again this morning is this the Lord Jesus told this parable and he told this parable of this rich man he told this parable of this man who had many goods many goods and he built more barns now in life as we are going on in life and we are working hard and we're doing things and we're saving our money and we're doing this and we're doing that if we looked at this man, we would say what he is doing is very wise, wouldn't we? We'd say what he's doing is very wise. He's worked hard. He's done his best. He's done all the right things. He's got all the benefits because he's worked so hard, and that is good. And he's very sensible, really, when we think about it. <clears throat> if you've got barns in the full or whatever it is, then you would want more provision, wouldn't you? You would look for something bigger to provide all that you have. But that isn't the point in this parable that the Lord Jesus Christ is getting at. What the Lord Jesus Christ is getting at in this parable is this. All that the man was concerned about was himself. All he was bothered and concerned about was himself. And why do I say that? Well, I say that because of this. In verse 18. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. There will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Now when we look at that, 
lots of people might think, well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Well, maybe not. But the key to it is this. There is no thought of God. No thought of God at all. None. And dear friend, I just wonder, is that us today? Is that us today? We just go about our day. We just go about our life. Going along, doing this, that and the other. And we have no thought and no time for God. No thought and no time for God. That's what this man was like. He had no time. He had no thought for God. He just said, soul. So I read it correctly. So thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. Is that not what society would look at? Is that not like our society today? I know there's been an awful lot of said about parties and things going on because of the restrictions and everything else that are happening at this time. But is that not the thought and the idea that people have today? Eat drink and be merry and you might think well what's wrong with that well the problem is this there is no thought of God and this man he said soul do you know our soul is never dying our soul is with us forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and what we do with the Lord Jesus Christ isn't just for now but it is for all eternity what we do with him, our response to the Lord Jesus, doesn't just affect us for now, but it, for, it affects us forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. And that is why, dear friend, we come and we gather and we set up online and we open the hall up. Why? To tell the message of the one, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's made it possible that you can be saved, who's made it possible that you can be rescued from your sin, because we have a never dying soul. And when we leave this earth, either in a coffin or when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, either we are with him or we are without him. And without him, we are lost and go to a lost eternity. And that, dear friend, is forever and ever and ever. That is why we gather. That is why we tell this message week after week after week after week to warn people, to warn people of their need of a saviour because of their sin. Because sin, dear friend, separates. If you listen and you watch online, you don't need me to tell you again, but I will. Our sin separates us from God. God can have nothing to do with our sin. But God has provided a way of salvation. God has provided a way, especially at this time of year. What do we think of? The Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. Why did he come? To be the saviour of the world. To be the saviour of the world. That's why he came. He came to rescue. He came to save. And dear friend, he can rescue and save you today if you turn from your sin and trust in him and not look to yourself. That's what this man did. He looked to himself. I, 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 I. Me, 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 me. Is that not society today? All about self. All about what we can get out of something. Oh, dear friend, it's not what we can do. It's what Christ has already done. It's what he has finished at Calvary's cross. He has made the way possible that we can be made right with God. We can have peace with him. Is that not what the world wants? They want peace. They want hope. They want joy. It can all be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. All found in him. All found in him. But what do we find this man? He had his own ideas, he had his own plans. Now, like I said, there's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with having plenty. But what it is, is this. Having no thought of God. Having no time for God. Having no place in our hearts and in our lives for him. Separated from him. 
That is where it becomes wrong. That is where it becomes an issue. That is where it becomes a problem. Because without Christ we are lost. Without Christ we have no hope. Without Christ we have no assurance. Without Christ we are lost. Oh but dear friend with him we have everything. We are not lost. We are secure. We are safe. With Christ we have a hope. We have peace. We have assurance. We have love. And we have a knowledge that one day we will be with him in heaven forever and ever and ever. Oh dear friend, we have a never dying soul. And that soul of ours, we are either going to be with him or we're going to be without him. It is our choice. It was this man's choice. What will you do with the Lord Jesus Christ? What will your response be? I don't want him. I don't want him. I'm just going to eat, drink and be merry. I'm just going to do my own thing, my own way. Oh, dear friend, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and I know I say it over and over again, and I won't apologize for it. One way, God said to get to heaven, Jesus is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Oh, that is the story of this Christmas time. The Lord Jesus, when he was born in Bethlehem, he came into this world to save. He came into this world to rescue. He's made it possible that we can be saved. But we have to turn to him and repent and believe. And if we do, we will be saved. But what does it say? Verse 19. I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast muscles laid up for many years. Take thine ease, drink and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Oh, that's it, dear friend. Do we know what tomorrow will bring? Oh, well, you'll say, well, I've got a diary. Of course I do. I've got this planned, and I've got that planned. I'm at the doctor's tomorrow. I've got an appointment to see this person. I've got an appointment to see that person. That's not what I'm saying, dear friend. That is not what I'm getting at. We can plan, we can organise, we can look to the future. But dear friend, none of us, none of us know what tomorrow will bring. None of us. We could go out of that door this morning and we could get knocked over and we could be into eternity. The Lord Jesus Christ could come even at this very moment and we're into eternity. We do not know what tomorrow will bring. We do not know when our next breath will be. But what we know for a surety and for a certainty is this. Without Christ we are lost without hope. And without peace. With him we have hope, we have peace, we have joy. And we have assurance that we are saved, we are rescued and that we are going to heaven. Oh dear friend, what will your response be? What will your choice be? Will you choose him or will you reject him? Will you accept him? Or will you say, not for me? Not for me. What does God say? Fool. Fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, dear friend. We're not guaranteed next week. But one thing we are guaranteed is our soul will never die. And our soul will either be with God in heaven or we will be lost. We are either with him or we are without him. What will your response be even today with the offer of salvation? God has paid it all. God has done it all. It's all been finished at Calvary's cross. What will your response be? Shall we pray? Father, we do just thank thee for the short time we've been able to gather this morning. We do just thank thee for the Saviour. We do just think of this rich man who 
had barns and built greater. And oh, our Father, we think of how he had no thought of God, just thought of himself and all that he had. Oh, our Father, we would just pray that we would just really think today of where we stand before a holy and righteous God. And if there are any, oh, our Father, that are not yet saved, that today they would turn from their sin and trust him for themselves. So, oh, Father, we do just pray for safety as we go our separate ways now. We ever give thee thanks in his precious and worthy name. Amen.